that the one? Yes. Good evening, members of council. I see that we have staff and, and members of the public. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting of Committee of the Whole to order. It has been moved by Councillor Durley. I'm trying to get the sheet of paper here that the agenda for the February 2nd, 2015 regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adopted. Are there any changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next is a declaration of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof that is any conflicts of interest do any members have any conflicts yeah. they need yeah. to disclose can that be so noted that there are no conflicts next we move to the corporate services it's been moved by council ribiac that committee of the whole received the january 2015 corporate services monthly report for information questions comments Councilor Papp. Very quickly through you to the Madam Treasurer. On there it says you're developing the website for public consultation. What exactly is this, does that mean? What are we trying to incorporate in that? To you, Mr. Chair. Um, it is a, a place where the public can chat and, and provide comments to <coughs> information that we might put out about uh, a zoning uh, application or a committee of adjustment uh, notice and so forth. So this is a new software about uh, uh, coming on board and uh, being proposed in the budget for 2015. Okay, I'd be very curious because one of our strategic goals is to improve mm -hmm. communication and all that. So it's a macro application that I as John Q. Public could go on there and look at any of the different departments and make a comment or make suggestions. Is that the idea? That's mm -hmm. Okay, I think this was something that, you, very quickly, I think we yeah. saw this in Ottawa, they were doing this and it was very effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to having pub well, not just not public meetings, but they use this vehicle mm -hmm. in order to get whether well, pros, cons, and that. Okay, good. I got it. That's good. good. Yeah. I like good. to see a demonstration. I like to see how that works too. Very good. Yeah. We'll consider. Okay, thank some you. Sort of demonstration or link or something, as it moves forward, Madam Treasurer. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Right. Others, any others to the uh, treasurer's report? Okay, going to call the question. All those in favor. Any opposed? That motion is carried. It's been moved by Councillor Durley. That committee of the whole received the Pelham Distribution System 2014 summary report for information purposes. Lots of work here about the distribution uh, system. Thank you, Mr. Mannell, for spearheading that and overseeing that. Welcome. Another good news report. So you're staying? Excellent work. <laughs> Any other comments? There being none, they call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you again. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak that Committee of the Whole receive the January 2015 Public Works and Utilities Department report for information. I do want to say at the outset, Mr. Mantle, um, that uh, received a lot of positive comments with uh, members of the roads crew uh, today. Clearing mm -hmm. away that snow, um, mm -hmm. just tremendous. Uh, mm -hmm. Even just driving here this evening, the the roads are, are are great, and it's all clear and looks wonderful. So thank you. Please pass along our thanks do. Uh, to staff for that. I know they put a lot of lot of effort, a lot of time into that. So thank you. Other questions, comments, Councillor Kersey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, I wonder if Mr. Mantle uh, could give us an update on the sanitary sewer video inspection and smoke right. testing. Have we received a final report and? And if so, how many uh, offenders have we uh, identified and what Mr. constructive Mayor. steps have we taken to improve that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, we have received the final report. Um, staff are reviewing them currently. Um, there's a lot to look at in that, in that report, so it'll take a little bit of time to summarize what we found. Um, on first uh, examination, there doesn't seem to be a lot. Um, in there to, to look for like um, we're not finding the connections that we thought there would be but again it rules out certain things for us mm -hmm. and uh, the next step and we've included in our 2015 uh, budget uh, request is uh, for uh, uh, inflow infiltration study uh, to start getting more deeply into the how the system operates and uh, theoretical flows compared to actual flows that sort of thing so to answer your question we have not got that a final report yet there we have the final report but we haven't reviewed it completely yet Thank you. Thank you. And in terms of timing on that, Mr. Pedal? I would hope by the end of the month. Okay. Thank you very much. Others <coughs> for Mr. Mantle's report? Just uh, Councillor Papko has quickly, I think maybe I, 
through you. Uh, Mr. Mann, I, I take it the fleet technician is the mechanic? That's correct. Okay, <clears throat> okay good. Okay, thank you. Others? Uh, I, Mr. Mannell, uh, I, I have received some um, interest <coughs> in the uh, snow clearing uh, in downtown uh, Fenwick, um, and I uh, just want to commend staff when that was, uh, staff were notified on that, they acted uh, quickly on that. This was last week, so uh, thank you very much for that. It's a concern of, of businesses that those parking spaces are cleared so that uh, commerce can continue, and uh, staff acted very quickly on that. Um, when it became known that it was a challenge. So thank you for that. Anything else on Mr. Mandel's report? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. It's been moved by Councillor Ribiak that Committee of the Whole receive the January 15th, uh, 2015, sorry, Community Planning and Development Services Report for information. Comments or questions? Councillor Durley, then Ribiak. Councillor uh, Durley. I have two comments, and unfortunately the director isn't here, but one deals with the uh, uh, the first paragraph there on the Heritage Committee where it looks like the Heritage Committee <coughs> is asking to have a second building stay on a property and when the new building is there, and I'm just wondering if that conflicts with our with our policies. And the, uh, the second is there's some a notice of uh, uh, some concerns from uh, that the official plan policies hinder and obstruct infill revitalization and development of the downtown core. And I, I just would like to get a little better handle on what is wrong in the official plan that, that is causing, causing this to happen. Okay, uh, there's two items there. Maybe Mr. C.A. you can take them uh, one at a time to the first item under the Heritage Committee. Can you answer that on behalf of, or for the councillor? Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, uh, this uh, recommendation, I guess you could call it from the Heritage Committee, was uh, uh, something that was in response to a presentation that was made at the last meeting with regards to uh, 1732 Cream Street. Uh, the owner of the property is desirous to build a new structure, however, it is the estate of the Comfort family associated with the Comfort Maple, and there was some question about whether or not this was a historically significant structure or not. Um, because it is in the green belt and all the provincial policy statements that apply to it, uh, you cannot have more than the existing structures. So the only way you can deal with the structures is if you tear it down and build a new one. You can't have two, so you couldn't. Even if you were to designate one heritage site or a heritage building, uh, you still wouldn't be permitted to build a second one. Um, so the information that was provided by the Heritage Committee was um, uh, simply accepted by staff. I know that uh, the director did send a follow-up email to the owner uh, correcting some of the misinformation that was provided at that particular meeting and uh, um, we'll be proceeding based on the, um, the directives of the, uh, the province and the legislation as opposed to the opinion of the Heritage Committee. Thank you. Okay. Councillor, anything further to that? No, nope, that was just okay. a thing. I, I, I know from, uh, that you can't have to, and I, I just yeah. getting a. Uh, Any others to that? Enforcement there. I know I was concerned as well. It appeared that uh, the Heritage Committee was acting like a committee of adjustment, so uh, I'm glad that uh, that's not in their purview, and I'm glad that that's going to be rectified. So. Um, to, to the second item that Councillor Durley raised. Um, it's under constituents' concern and issues arising where recent applications and pre-consultation meetings with developers has led to identification of official plan policies that hinder and obstruct infill revitalization and strengthening of the town's urban core. The development community has expressed these concerns and I just, uh, you know, what what in our official plan is is not good and if, if in fact there is something that's not good, should we move to make it better? Mr. CAO, can you answer the help the council? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We have had some feedback from um, some of the development community with regards to infill projects in the downtown area. Uh, currently, the official plan restricts infill to 25% of the current density. You can't exceed that, which is uh, additional 25%. And an additional 25% onto what the existing neighborhood currently has, which in some cases doesn't allow you to do much at all in the way of densification and uh, infill. Um, we're not entirely sure the, the, the rationale behind that particular restriction. However, uh, I have been notified that um, 
the development community will be sending a formal request to council to, to take a look at that issue and expecting that <coughs> to come forward. And uh, council at that time may want to take a look, uh, direct staff take a look at that particular provision in the uh, official plan. Okay, there's that. Thank you. Okay, Councillor, do you, do you want, um, I, I think we're awaiting a letter, but do you want additional information from no, Mr. I, Glover at a future the meeting? due process will 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 take it. it it's uh, it, it just sent up a flare when I looked at that, saying if there is something that we can do to to help out, let's do it. But let's uh, uh, again, if if the development community is going to come with a specific letter, uh, that will I think help to focus it, and and we'll get the answer from that. Okay, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Councilor Riviak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Drilling has covered the, the two big ones. That leaves me with one tiny little one. Are we really comparing our building activity statistics to 2013, or is that a is that a typo? 2014 uh, comparison data, I or that is correct, Mr. Mayor. Okay, I <coughs> assumed it was, uh, but maybe that can be clarified. Yep. Thank you. That's it. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Others. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. We look forward to receiving that information that uh, was raised second by you, Councillor Durley. I'm going to call the question on receiving that uh, report. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. It's been moved by Councillor Papp, the Committee of the Whole, received the January 2015 Fire and Bylaw Services Report for information. Questions, comments? Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My, my question is uh, is with regard to, to um, the statistics in the first part um, and the absence of, of com comparative uh, history mm. with which to make any kind of, 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 of judgment. I wonder whether reports in the future might include what happened this time last year or whatever, whatever is relevant to help us understand whether we are improving or, or not or thank you chief can you respond to that the report just has it for the month as opposed to a comparison to January last year or the entire year for all departments like when we our fire at bylaw all our different stats or? Uh, thank you mr. mayor uh, chief I think it's it's the numbers alone actually don't tell us whether we're doing better, doing worse, or whether there's a situation developing unless we have something to, mm -hmm. to compare it to. So really, uh, where, whatever numbers that, that you have, if there's an ability to put a second column beside it just, just to help us understand whether we're trending up, down, staying the same, doing better, I mean, it, it, a, a number in itself means remarkably little. Okay, Th thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. It's a good comment. I, I think it's like looking at a tachometer on a car. If, you know, only if you know when it's, it's in the red, do you know that it's it's bad, and otherwise it's it's good. And but you don't want it too low, etc. So I think what the councilor is looking for is, is not only the the number, but also some, evaluation of whether that's a good number, or bad number, and a good way to do that is compared to previous years. Other reports do that. Good issue to raise. Anything else? on the uh, fire and bylaw report. There being no others, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And thank you as well, Chief, for including uh, the additional information here, the simplified risk assessment to give us a, a further understanding of the community. So thank you for that. Next item has been moved by Councillor Papp, and it is the Committee of the Whole received the issue sheet providing the Christmas in Pelham final report for information. Discussion? Are we ready for calling the question? All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Certainly appreciate all the effort that was uh, occurred with Christmas and Pelham. It's a great celebration and how it all comes together. So uh, Mr. CAO, please thank the director for that. It's been moved by uh, Councillor Junkin that uh, committed the whole receive the January 2015 Recreation, Culture and Wellness Department report for information. Any questions, comments in that particular report? Improv classes. 
We look forward to those. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item has been moved by Councillor Kersey. The Committee of the Whole received the January 2015 Clerk's Department Report for information. Questions? Oh, I'm sorry, Councillor Kersey. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was just wondering, with respect to the AMP review hearings, if, um, if there's any reason why we couldn't get a report on the outcomes of those hearings again to see whether or not there's trends happening um, or are we forbidden to see that hear about that let's hear a little bit more about it madam clerk through you mr. chair um, I could give a general synopsis um, so far of the two that have been heard the fines have been slightly reduced okay And Thank you. So, so just for those that that's what, what does AMP stand for? It's the Municipal Parking Ticket Citation. It stands for. <laughs> I should have put that out. Um, Bob, do you remember? Sorry, um, Mr. Chief. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just trying to clarify for folks. Apologies. It's, it's the Municipal Parking Program where. Um, I'm just trying to think of what A stands for. Administ administrative. Administrative, administrative, administrative Municipal, Municipal Parking. Municipal Parking Program. Yeah. Program right. Thank you. I apologize for that. Didn't mean to put you on the spot. Councillor? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wondered, are there guidelines to guide you, Madam Clerk, in terms of when to reduce the fines and on what grounds fines should be reduced and to what degree? And Or is it a matter of just trying to assess fairness and just, just for information? For you, Mr. Chair. Um, what I do is review the ticket that was issued by our bylaw enforcement uh, department. It's always supported by um, background material such as photographs and uh, that information. Then I do have a, a separate hearing with the complainant or the person who received the citation and um, listen to what might be uh, extenuating circumstances and we discuss what um, options might be viewed in the future. In one case, um, there was, there was a very slight reduction, um, and in the other case, there seemed to be a bit of a problem in the interpretation of where a sign was actually placed. Um, so we reviewed that with Public Works Department and, and took some steps to, to make some changes there. Um, so it's, it's on an individual case-by-case -case basis. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Other councillors? To items? Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk, for including information regarding... Uh, Accountability and transparency regarding the Ontario Ombudsman's uh, report um, that was uh, released. Uh, one of the things that you do note here is recommendations regarding audio or uh, audio recording of closed session meetings. Um, and you, you write that the clerk is aware of only one local municipality who records closed session meetings. <coughs> uh, can you just elaborate a little and is this something that we should be considering? Uh, on a go-forward basis. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I did do a, a quick survey of local municipalities and the region to see who does audio recordings of their closed session meetings and found that only one municipality does. Um, we reviewed a little bit of uh, information about the security of those tapes mm -hmm. and how they're stored and how, they're, um, how they are maintained because once it becomes uh, considered a record of the municipality, it's something that does have to be maintained under our records management system. Um, so it's something that we could investigate. Um, I wouldn't uh, at this point make recommendation to record it through the system that we have uh, because that would need the, uh, the use of our microphone system to record in and then have it um, downloaded by another party. The only thing I would uh, perhaps investigate is some uh, more of a standalone system um, and maybe use an SD card that could be stored. Um, but. Uh, as, um, at the point right now, only one municipality does that, and others are not considering it at this point. And they've been doing it just for a couple of months, is that correct? For a couple of months, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you for the information. As long as we're uh, looking at it, considering it, uh, always ways to, uh, to be more accountable and transparent. And, and my understanding of the reason for that, the Ombudsman suggesting that, is should there be a, um appeal, I'll say, for lack of a better word, to the Ombudsman, from member of the public, then 
it's really for the ombudsman's office to review the audio and whether it matches the records, et cetera, the, the, the notes that you keep. Is that correct? Uh, that's essentially it. There, there was some, uh, when the new legislation came into being with the new municipal act, some municipalities were not keeping um, detailed records of their closed session mm. meetings. Some municipalities still don't keep uh, detailed records of their closed session meetings. We do keep very detailed notes of our closed session meetings, as you are aware. So um, that in the, in the past has satisfied the Ombudsman, but uh, should Council direct, we will certainly look into recording audio. Okay. Thank you for, for uh, discussing it. Anything further on the clerk's report? Did I see you, Councillor Beck? No? There being no others, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. And uh, we did uh, receive a uh, report from the CAO. It's been moved by Councillor Akursi and seconded by Councillor Jung. The committee of the whole received the January 2015 Chief Administrative Officer's report for information. Any comments, questions regarding the CAO's report? I think we're just uh, reviewing it here. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. CAO, for um, serving and being involved in, I forget the name of the committee here. Here it is on the front page, the Niagara Health System Clinical Visioning Sessions. Mm -hmm. Uh, which will be com concluded this month. Um, hopefully that's a benefit to both the NHS and to our community that you are serving there and uh, helping with a patient point of view um, regarding their, their planning that they're doing. So thank you for serving on that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? Councillor Percy, anything? No, uh, Mr. Mayor. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you, Mr. CEO. It has been moved by Councillor Kersey that this regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole be adjourned until the next regular committee meeting scheduled for Tuesday, February 17th, 2015, unless sooner called by the Mayor, Tuesday because it's the holiday. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting Thank is adjourned. You. Thank you. Councillors, are we prepared to continue or do we need a break? Let's go. Can we uh, keep going? Keep mm -hmm. rolling? Keep going. Members of Council, okay. the clerk needs uh, 30 seconds here. Thank you. Members of Council, staff, ladies and gentlemen, I see that we have quorum and I call this special meeting of Committee of the Whole to order. It's been moved by Council Ribiak that the agenda for the January 27th, 2015, now rescheduled to February 2nd, 2015, special meeting of Committee of the Whole be adopted as circulated. Any changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Do any members have any conflicts of interest they need to disclose? Can it be noted that no members have indicated they have a conflict? <coughs> next on the agenda, Council will recall that um, as we are going through our strategic plan, and really this is unfinished business from that, that we said that we wanted to align our various uh, committees of the town, the volunteer Committees of the town. Okay, thank you. The clerk's just going to put the uh, the chart up on the screen. So thank you for that. the The idea of re reflecting and saying, the, why do these committees exist? They obviously exist to fulfill the strategic plan. The clerk, uh, in preparation for this meeting, uh, included. Um, a report here about strategic plan alignment of committee appointments uh, made some observations and uh, it has been moved by Councillor Junkin, seconded by Councillor Kersey, that the issue summary report strategic plan alignment of committee appointments be received for information. Comments or questions to the clerk's report? Councillor Kersey. Uh, okay. Um, Sorry, I, saw, I thought you wanted to. to I, I just wondered. 
Are we going to have the discussion at this juncture with receiving the report? Are we going to re or are we going to receive the report and have the information and then have a discussion around what all that means and how it should be laid out and, and visualized? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I just need some structure. Most of the some... most of the recommendations that are here are, are to receive, and if council wants to wants to uh, change any of the items, um, it's really under five six. Is that correct? So it's a bit clunky, but there is uh, an opportunity for committee input, and really that's where we're going to have the discussion under 5 no, that point. We want to make sure we have all the information. That's fine. That's, that was okay. the clarity I wanted, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I mean, maybe what we could do is simply change this and receive all of the information. How's that? And then we don't have to keep just going yeah, through. Yeah, that's, that's good. So let's amend um, the, if that's okay. Instead of receiving it all, we just receive it in block. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that okay? Yep. And, and we can and then talk about it. Yeah. Talk about it. So we're not looking to lift any of them or no, no, no. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to say that we receive all all of those items in block five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Yep. And uh, I'll say that that's been moved by Councillor Kersey, and we'll take that as uh, as an amendment, Councillor Kersey. All you. those in favor of that amendment to put them all together. Any, any opposed? That motion is carried. And now to the main motion to receive them and receive them all in block. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. So we now have received all of those items in block. And Councillor Kirsty, it's time to discuss. So go ahead. If you want to leave it, leave it off for another member. I'll do for, you go ahead. Councillor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I have some uh, specific ideas with regard to the various. We did. Uh, committees uh, and, and their terms of reference but I had one comment that kind of affected all of them so if, if you don't mind like yep. to put that one first and then and maybe we can, we can look at it in, in reviewing the terms of reference of the various committees I noted that some made mention of a role for financial reporting some did not and on the basis of that it occurred to me that that in fact there is, is really very little and very often nothing related to uh, to money or budgets in any of the terms of, of reference and and I think it's probably important that the terms of reference of the committee uh, have within it some indication of whether the committee has no budget no no opportunity to, to to gather money or spend money or is expected to make recommendations to council with, with re requests for money or indeed is able to put forward a budget for operational requirements that we might be able to consider from time to time, or even um, uh, have money assigned to it to uh, uh, to, to to function uh, to, to 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 forward projects uh, or to to manage projects on its own, and I think that's a that in my mind that seems like a fairly important um, thing to understand about. Any committee, and and I just wonder whether we mightn't, as we go through all of these, decide uh, whether the committee ought to have money of its own, ought not to have money of its own, ought to come to council, whatever it is that we we want to do, and I don't know whether we want to do it here or ask as staff to do it as as part of a review ultimately and make a recommendation with regard to the committees, but I I really do want us to see money mentioned in the terms of reference and uh, make that a uh, a, a clear understanding between council and the, the specific committees. Okay, thank you, councillor. Um, since you were looking at that in the terms of reference, you're saying that some of them mention it, some of them don't. Can you just give a, your colleagues yeah, around the table yeah. just a quick? Let me see if I can find one. You, usually it says that at, at the end that uh, the financial records will be kept by, by the staff person, but not all the committees have that line in it. Okay. And that was uh, that was something that that, it, that it told me that there was something about money that was really really missing. That that, and I, I could find the specifics, but I'm sure we can all all find them as well. Take my word for it. Some of them say <laughs> something about financial reporting, and, yeah. and, and and many do not. Okay, thank you, Madam Treasurer. Do you want to comment on the use of budgets? Uh, you provided this information here, the budget allocation uh, chart. Can you comment on that? Should all of the terms of reference from the committees have that component in it? 
um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the the budgets that I provided you with are uh, not budgets specifically for the committee members to utilize for professional development and those kind of things. They are for running of a program. Right. So if it's for communities right. movement, it's for right. the supplies and services that they need to put communities movement in place in the town. Um, so I just wanted to provide that clarity because uh, it's a little bit different than some of the budget that requests that's coming from some of the other committees. Mm -hmm. um, there are the terms of reference um, I noted uh, by myself and, and uh, the deputy treasurer as well that it doesn't always refer to the reporting being done by fine, uh, corporate services or by the treasurer or being um, uh, you know, reported back to the group by the treasurer. It does say it in some of them. Um, we do do all of the uh, bookkeeping for the, the committees in house and, and so forth. And the budgets are created at the time that uh, the 2000, uh, the, the annual budget is, is prepared for council's consideration. And that's typically done by um, consolidating or coordinating with the, the um, recreation calls general wellness director and the committee members themselves on what the needs are. Okay, is that helpful? So councillor, should, should each of the terms of reference have some sort of, and maybe the treasurer would want to wade in on this, but have some sort of reference to spending and budget and those kind of things that it, that it really, maybe just for clarity, right? It's better that it's written down than not written down. Somebody says, well, we can just go and spend these funds. Do you have a just, recommendation for just that? From the financial perspective, um, I think it's in the best interest to, through our auditors as well that um, there is a financial piece and, and someone is, is bringing that to the table at the meetings and, and providing the the updated reports because we have noted on occasion when the reports are done by other staff members that uh, it's not filtering through us. There's stuff like accruals and, and uh, deferred revenues that have to be accounted for um, so that we can make sure that those all get in, encompassed in the report before it's presented back to the committee. And ultimately they're making decisions on those reports as well. So, Okay, Councillor, would uh, a solution? Or well, I, I, to the issue I think the this? answer is, is, is a good one. I think it's, it's, it's probably clear to all of us that different activities, different responsibilities probably require different ways of handling money and different reporting uh, protocols. What I'm saying is that no terms of reference for any committee should be silent on the question of money, that it should be clearly indicated in it what the expectations of the committee are with respect to that. And they could all be different, mm -hmm. but there should be something in them so that, that whoever's looking at it or if ever there's a question, the answer was in the okay. terms of reference before we started. All right. Thank you. To that, Councillor Kersey, to that issue? To that issue, I, I agree with him. Okay. <laughs> Councillor. <laughs> Councillor so you want to talk about Councilor another issue? I wanted to talk about something else. Uh, that uh, issue? Yeah. Dealing with this issue, the uh, Committees like the candidate committee and that certainly there's suspending involved. But the, for example, the grant award committee, there, there's no money. All they do is uh, is allocate uh, right. what we do from our, uh, you know, from the funding that we give the permissive grant. So you know there isn't any necessity to be anything financially there because although they're dealing with distributing money, they're not really handling any money or not doing anything with money. So uh, you know I'm just wondering. Yeah. If it would be redundant to say financial reporting would be there because they don't do any financial reporting. Professor Rubiak. Thank, thank you, and, and it's a good point, and, and I and I understand that uh, completely. My, um, I, I think that that saying. Well, let me just back up. I think the purpose of this whole discussion is to line up the terms of reference to to have an alignment of them, and one of the areas that can be aligned is. Uh, a, a statement with respect to to the nature of its expenditures. It's absolutely true that that that, that committee doesn't spend any of its own money. It, it, it makes a recommendation to to council. Uh, other uh, other committees are assigned money through the budgeting process and, and need to be uh, reported and that sort of thing. So all I'm looking for is an alignment. So if there's a, okay. if, if there's a, a heading in there called you know financial or something and and it describes what it is. Even if the answer is it has no money of its own, that's a pretty clear statement, and it, it helps us align all of the, the terms of reference, all, all the committees. Okay. Thank you. I, I think it's um, just to build quickly on it, and we've, we've talked about it a lot, but um, we had uh, some committees in the past that would do fundraising on the side. They would had their own bank accounts. Sometimes they had a bank account with the town. Sometimes they didn't, and, and, and so I think this will help clarify it. So essentially the councillor is saying that it should not be silent regarding finances and maybe we can direct staff to put something in each of the committee's terms of reference to refer to finances. 
Okay, so if that's okay by everybody, we'll continue. I'm going to turn to Councillor Kersey because he wants to talk about something else. Councillor Kersey. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I took a I took an entirely different approach to uh, rather than getting we down in the that. It, Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> rather than getting down in the weeds, I sort of took a tried to take a policy point mm -hmm. of view at it, and I felt that uh, I feel that we should have a uh, committee policy in which we lay out. Mm -hmm. A, a similar type of document to what our strategic plan is. So we should, you know, for example, we should state in there that uh, one of the purposes, <coughs> or one of the purposes of having uh, uh, committees, is that they will help to enforce and initiate our top values, our values. So it, by having committees, for example, it will assist in being open and transparent. It will assist in accountability and it will assist us in being fair and equitable. Mm -hmm. And then take it down further and some of the goals of these committees would then be to help us to, to maintain a small town feel. Mm -hmm. The very fact that we are a small town and we get to know our neighbors and our neighbors get engaged in, in things that are impacting on their lives allows us to have a very effective committee structure. So, you know, in the preamble and some of the goals and initiatives of, of uh, this <coughs> committee policy, if you will, would be to sort of lay out those values, goals, and priorities which are applicable to a committee structure. Not every one of council's priorities is applicable to a committee structure, but there are certainly some. You know, building trust in our, our uh, corporation, engaging residents in uh, decision making, uh, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. um, would be incorporated into this policy. Uh, as a preamble and as, as guidelines for the committees to understand why they're there mm -hmm. and for us to understand why they're there. And then, Mr. Mayor, what I did is I went and I, I looked at some of the existing committees that we have and I looked at how do they align not only with the strategic plan but how do they align with the departments? Mm -hmm. Because we've said all along that it's important that we have departmental representation on most if not all of our committees as well as council representation. So then I started saying, okay, well, what types of committees would be applicable to corporate services? What would be applicable to the clerk, um, the planning department, rec and culture, um, and public works? And, and then you sort of start breaking down the committees that we currently have and align them with those different departments. And then try to vision what other committees might be needed in the short term and also for a longer term. Some of the short term would be ad hoc, ad hoc committees, similar to the, the advisory committee, where they have a specific purpose and function and they get in, get out, and make a recommendation to council and, and do it. So that's sort of how I, I tried to uh, play through that. So for example, under the clerk's department, um, I had the uh, JAAC committee and the Committee of Adjustment, Advisory for example. Yeah. yeah. So those have an allegiance or an alliance with, with the clerk's department. Mm -hmm. They also interplay with other departments, but mm -hmm. specifically the reports come through the clerk's department. Under planning, um, you have heritage. Um, I think Communities in Bloom could play a role in planning. Pelham Active Transportation certainly plays a role in planning and public works. There's, a, again, a bit of an overlap. Um, in one of the reports, uh, the, our, our director of planning talked about having our uh, comprehensive bylaw uh, committee mm -hmm. where he brings in stakeholders. And so, again, that would be an ad hoc committee, but it would still be reporting on a structure through planning and, and development. Um, and the rec and culture, I, th I thought a way of simplifying things would be to have a, a festival and event committee, which would then have spin-off committees that they could structure and they could have as working ad hoc committees, such as um, Summerfest Committee, um, what do you call it, uh, Canada Day, right. Christmas in Town. Supper Market. Yeah, so that they would then, they would report uh, to the festivals and events committee, which in effect would then 
help to structure the uh, reporting. Uh, they would provide the report and advice to council, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it would simplify. Uh, it might reduce staff time as well in, in involvement in these committees. Um, so I have a, a number of these. There's some, for example, the library is an independent body, but we appoint them. So I think in some way we need to improve on the, the communication structure between um, uh, council and the library, and maybe it's through corporate services since we give them an awful lot of money. I think um, that that would be an ideal reporting uh, place because that would help us get some understanding of how they're spending the money and, and what have you. So I don't want to belabor it, but I went through a long sort of play here on my mind on how things might might work because I, I believe in the in the value and role of committees in the way we govern and, and how we run this community. And then I sort of went through each uh, committee and tried to understand where they were. But I'll stop there because I don't want to okay. dominate the I put out a number of ideas that maybe others would like to comment on or okay. discuss. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I captured I'll say three general areas that you spoke about. The first is the need for committee policy. Right. Okay. Uh, some of that I think is in the in the clerk's uh, first memo, but what you're talking about is is an actual policy, the importance of committee, just what I said at the beginning, that it's it follows through on the strategic plan uh, and initiatives and, and things like that. So um, if council wants to uh, the second one is you recommended that uh, and I think Council colleagues were are of the same mind to this, uh, aligning the committees with our strategic goals. But then you also suggested, as another way to think about it, and um, I'll say over, overseeing or involving staff in it would be through the departments. And then the third thing you spoke about was a specific committee regarding, uh, and you called it the Festivals and Events Committee, and uh, some of those committees that can follow through on that. So I think those are the three major thrusts, and then you wanted to talk about uh, another element which we, we can get yeah, to. Right. So the first one to the idea of a, of a policy, a committee policy, we, thoughts, questions, should we direct staff to uh, work on developing a, an overarching policy? I think it's, it's incumbent in the, I'm going to say yes, uh, it's incumbent in the, in the clerk's report to us about ad hoc, advisory, working committees, those kind of things. Um, thoughts on that? And we can also get feedback from the CAO. Who wants to go first, Councillor Durley? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea. And also, I think there, as a spin off of that or building on that, the actual mention before of a, <laughs> a mandate, a definite letter of what each member of the committee uh, should be doing and, and how they should be doing it and how the committee in general should act as well. So I think that's the, uh, the spin off of each, each committee. If you're ad hoc, you should be. Uh, concentrating on this. If you're advisory, you should be concentrating on that. And if you're events and festivals, you should be concentrating on the third thing. So, uh, you know, to be uh, in general, you've got the uh, the topics as listed in the clerks. But in you know, getting into specifics, each committee has a has a different function and a different pair of running shoes to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to run on. So, you know, this would be a, an ideal way to uh, to bring people into focus. Okay. Thank you. I agree with that uh, as well. I don't know if that it would occur in a policy. Maybe the policy would say something like um, council will present a mandate, like a mandate letter to committees annually, biannually, mm -hmm. you know, every two years or, one, or, or something like that. And, that. and then what we can do is, is do that in, in, uh, in practice. Um, and the type of committee and uh, spending would be the things that could go in the policy. A type of committee, whether it be ad hoc or or a working committee, etc. Uh, other comments, or do you want to hear from the CAO? I, let's hear from the CAO and then Councillor Rubiak. Mr. CAO, <laughs> in terms of a policy. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know me; I love it when Council does policy, so I think it's a great idea. Um, I, I do have one question um, with regards to tying a sort of permanent policy in with a strategic plan that will constantly evolve and there was some reference by the councillor about you know specifically citing some priorities and goals in the like today's strategic plan if that's going to be reviewed annually and changing 
Uh, I'm just, I guess I need a little more clarity on how that would work in a policy context. Okay, Councillor Kersey and then Ribiak. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, I think we could build into the policy that when Council uh, does its update of its strategic plan and reviews its initiatives and priorities and goals, what have you, mm -hmm. that it would be mandated within the policy committee policy that we sit down and review what is the relevance of this committee is it still in line uh, in line with our priorities and goals have they outlived their usefulness etc so rather than just having a committee that would be appointed for four years and it runs on forever uh, it we make in the terms of reference that the priorities of that committee mm -hmm. would be reviewed on an annual basis mm -hmm. So that it stays aligned with the priorities and, and uh, structure that that council is pushing forward right. with. Okay. Council Riviak, to the idea of a policy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm also uh, supportive. We, we clearly have the practice of creating committees, but our practice has not been uh, consistent, which is why we're here discussing this. So the the major impact to me of of uh, a policy like that is that it would then create uh, a, a template, uh, an expectation of, of how committees would be formed in the first place, and how they would be uh, how they would be uh, populated, and, and and how they would function. So, I'm uh, I'm, I'm highly supportive of it. Uh, let me let me just go one step further and, and comment on 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 the latest uh, and, and build on the latest uh, uh, section of this discussion. I, I I really do think that that. Not only this policy would change as the strategic goals change, but it really forces us to examine quite a number of policies uh, that may uh, turn out to be far more living documents than uh, than they typically have been in the past. Policies, I guess, are, are generally viewed as something that's that's set in concrete and will last forever. But if our strategic goals change, then the policies ought to change, and this is one that that, that really ought to be reviewed uh, whenever. But the others. You know, quite a number of others should should be looked at too to determine whether they continue to support the strategic goals of, of the corporation. Okay, let's draw it up uh, on policy. Anything further, uh, Councillor Pound? Well, building on fully supportive, the key component of all of this at an even a higher level is that we've stated we want community engagement. Mm -hmm. We want people involved. Mm -hmm. We want to be sure that we're clear, and I don't want to get specific. If they get involved in these committees and we set those standards, scope of work, they understand what their jurisdiction is, they understand how they're to operate, along with their financial responsibilities as well. So can it be reviewed? I couldn't agree more. At the end of each term of work of office, and whether it's annual, biannual, we decide then what is of value to continue because we ourselves maybe have changed or completed certain tasks in this goal, then those people would be adjusted accordingly. I, I think it's a very fluid approach. Uh, I like the idea of lining it with, I guess I wouldn't call it, but the service delivery models that we call corporate, mm -hmm. those are aligned with the resources that we use within the corporation. So it makes sense to place that kind of, how can I say, uh, integration or c connection, if you want to call it. So that becomes it. And it also becomes much more, how can I say, I hate the word transfer, but it's accountable to the public too, because then they see that we are truthfully using those, the best uh, interests of our constituents in helping us make good decisions and the right decisions. So I'm fully supportive of that. And I think that's something we've been wanting for, ye for years, and we need to do this now and maybe streamline it, as Gary was saying, in some cases we can put it under a macro heading and then it becomes like subgroups that can work. Right, right. And then we don't need to. I, I can't help but think that it would reduce work and sort of confusion over roles too. Yes. Mm -hmm. People wondering, what am I supposed to be doing here? What am I supposed to be, how am I supposed to carry out my responsibilities? So I'll end on that note. I think it's an excellent suggestion, okay. Councillor Kirsty. Thank you. So here's what I have and add to it and then the, what council is saying is yes, we want staff to uh, develop a draft policy for our consideration. Uh, those items would include things like spending. Councillor um, uh, Rubiak started with that. The type of committee, ad hoc or advisory or whatever it is, um, that the committees, as Councillor Drilly indicated, would get an annual mandate from council or whatever that time period is. Um, my reflection should be, I think. Councillor Kirsty mentioned this about the use of staff and staff resources and those kind of things. Sometimes that's been a, a hiccup 
it should be clarified. Uh, and then also the CAO um, came up with the, the concept of how often do we review the committees and so then something like or the, the policy can be reviewed when the strategic plan is reviewed. And it doesn't have to be a rewrite. It can right. be a, a confirmation and say, yeah, that's fine, let's keep moving. Um, but that's if we do, as Councillor Papp indicated, retool totally yep. and change our focus because we've completed something, as Councillor Papp indicated, then maybe the this particular policy can be re reworked. Um, that's my gist of what I, I heard of the conversation. Yeah. Is, are there any others to include in that policy at first blush? Councillor Kersey? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think also, uh, so that we have consistency and clarity in when we create a committee, we probably should encase in the policy a standard form document based on our problem solving uh, on how the term, what the terms of reference should look like. So there should be a stated purpose, a stated alignment with the goals and priorities. Mm -hmm. So we have a standard form document and it's a matter of then, you know, editing so that when we strike a committee, we know where we're going with that committee. Okay. So you that, want that in the policy as well. I, I, and I think, think that would help be helpful. Thank you. I think we've done some of that. The CEO is so showing yeah, we're moving and, that, way, and yeah. that we're answering a question right. at each of the policy right. statements and the and right. clerk and uh, CAO and maybe other members of staff have drafted actually mm -hmm. the terms of reference. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some confusion about it because these are in essence a redraft of terms of reference in the new format. So but that can be included in the policy. Anything else to include in that policy, Council Ribiak? Yeah, a couple of things. One uh, is, is the role, role of, of staff, the expectations yes. of that staff. I had use of staff, of, so we'll say role of staff. Yeah, the uh, the role and and, uh, and, and function of council mm -hmm. when, when right. appointed. And um, one that I have, have difficulty articulating because I don't know uh, uh, quite how to fit it in, so just let me, let me get it out. Um, there will be committees created at times that uh, may find themselves uh, the subject of, of legislation at other levels of government or policies of other levels of government and I think that some clarity needs to to be indicated as to um, the extent of, for want of a better term, independence of committees uh, who might draw from other policies or other legislation uh, some meaning uh, some direction to what they do. Again, I, I, I admit that I have trouble articulating it, but I can think of, of uh, at least one committee that, that, that can point to other pieces of paper and say, you know, it's stipulated there that we ought to be doing something, something so different. So like the Committee of Adjustment or the Library Board or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, any, any of those, you know. Um, there are committees that, that, that uh, we give, uh, we, we delegate some some uh, some legal responsibility to, like the uh, like like the committee of adjustment, and but a lot of our committees are okay. entirely beholden to us, and and so it's sort of within our um, our framework. How would you phrase that uh, interaction with other so pertinent legislation or something? Yeah. Can't frustrate any any other legislation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon? Can't frustrate any other legislation. Right. Okay. So, uh, role of staff, role of council, and um, the pertinent legislation or the interaction with legislation? Yeah, the expectation really of, of whether the committee's first uh, responsibility is to so, our having created them mm -hmm. or to mm -hmm. another uh, jurisdiction. jurisdiction else. So it's legislative responsibility. Uh, yeah, uh, but again, I'm sure as we work through our way, okay. we'll, we'll articulate that more, more precisely. But. I, I think we, we understand what the gist is. I, I think Mr. Mayor was going to add is that it's, well, we don't have legal. If they're created by the municipal corporation, even though they may have a, connections to certain pieces of legislation, they're part of the, unless it's specifically stated in the Joint Accessibility Committee, those things are very specifically stated. But in other a, areas, if they are the creation of the municipal corporation, it's their responsibility to us. Yeah. So the you know the downsiders they don't make the assumption that they take on the legislative as I was saying to right. Gary the ultra various they step out of that right. and start doing things right. and think that they ha they have every uh, how can I say every ability to do that when they don't so exactly. I think you prevent all that by telling them up front prescriptively exactly. here's how it works exactly the clerk has a term uh, it might include a statement on discretionary authority 
Yes. Marvin, come on over to the school board. Yes, okay. and, and the purpose of the policy, of course, is to clarify that because we will right. want some right. committees to have discretionary authority right. and others not. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. Right. Um, just reflecting on some committees, if they, they have that authority, there's a committee coming to council on Wednesday saying they were given this authority and now they want to change that authority. So they're coming to us to ask that. Um, so it's important to have that in the uh, in the but, policy. But there's a good example, Mr. Mayor, but, but, and in all due respect to them, but, but you have to put a boundary. Like yes. if they misunderstood that or it was, it's nobody's fault. It's just no. make it clearer by saying here's, if you can establish another type of committee like the architectural or whatever you want to go do it, that they understand what those parameters are, what the raison d'etre is, how they're going to operate, and what the responsibilities are. Because ultimately, the approving body, and you hear me say this all the time, it's us. So, so the to, to use a, a term, it was sort of like the, what did you call it? Le, leg, you Discretion. called it something. Discretionary authority. Discretionary authority or the legislative right. responsibility. Correct. For some, the Joint Accessibility Advisory Committee, their legislative responsibility is this, and the discretionary authority is this, including budget. Mm -hmm. uh, for other committees, as Councilor Papp, you indicated, they're they're generated from the town, from the council, right. uh, and here's the box that that the things we'd like you to do here's the box you're in and here's the the tasks the mandate like the mandate letter that we'd like you to do so those. and it's always understood forgive me mr mayor mm -hmm. and i don't mean to be brutal but it's true and it's not a secret if they're appointed at any given time you can disband them we have that authority to do that and say you know not that they're doing anything but if there's there's that power is there that's why, on the flip side of it, is why we're creating this, is because we believe that that input is invaluable to us, to have the citizens involved in that. So the final thing I'm going to add to this, and then I'm going to draw a loop around and then move right. on to Councillor Kersey's second item, um, is the idea of recognition of volunteerism. Councillor uh, Durley always talks about celebrating success. Yeah. Uh, when I reflect on the change from last council term to this council and we now have committees in a bit of a, a hiatus because of this we wanted to have this discussion um did we thank all the committees as much as we should for their for their input oh. so something in that document to say how they're thanked um those kind of things and and then the expectations are there and we thank them at the end of the term whatever or the end of their term of whether it's an ad hoc the end of that term or or at the end of the term of council so something about recognition of, of their their service so borrowing from another organization it's a standard protocol that whenever volunteer organizations or committees are set up that you have this celebration right you know it, and that that's done automatically that it's not a question of whether they do or don't you do it and people really I can tell you appreciate that extremely appreciate that and he's <coughs> clear yeah okay so I gave that to the clerk my little chicken scratch and she has it all on the so we'll look forward to a policy coming back uh, on that next year. Have a ready next tomorrow. meeting. I think is what next you said. Meeting, right? yeah, next so I think two hours. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Now, <laughs> Councillor Kersey, if we can move on, Councillor Kersey, you spoke about how we align the committees. You suggested uh, two methods: one, two strategic goals, which we sort of discussed, and also to departments. Um, do you want to add anything further to that, Councillor, quickly, and then well, the, the chat about the it? strategic goal alignment is sort of the higher level. The right. alignment with the functional departments is more on the practical level, right? Uh, right. Where they side. might have the the alignment with the staff, they might have the more uh, a greater impact, greater mm -hmm. ability to have knowledge at the mm -hmm. at the table when they're discussing the issues that we assign them to to discuss. So that was sort of the thought process that I had there. I'm going to turn the CAO. Um, we've had a discussion. You and I have had a discussion about committees before. And for example, is the Active Transportation Committee, which is to encourage walkable, cyclable communities, and and we've put money in the budget for their master plan. Um, they're currently under the Recreation, Culture, and Wellness. Under planning. There's some elements there, but maybe they should be under planning, or maybe not. Maybe they should be under Public Works. Is that what you're talking about, that's, Councillor? That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm talking about. about. Okay. So I don't know how we, we solidify that, Mr. CAO, in terms of um, the approach to the corporation. 
is, is this a staffing issue and say, well, for notionally, this particular committee is going to be under public works, for lack of a better term, or it's going to go under planning um, for staffing. But, but in general, it's sort of cross department, which is some of the areas that we have some success. Can you comment on that? Yes, Mr. Mayor, there's, I think big picture, there's two kind of elements here that we, that I struggle with a little bit. One is containing the overtime involved with staff participation okay. in committees because 99% of them are in the evening. Yeah. Um, so I need to manage that function somehow. Um, and there's a, currently a disproportionate amount of public or community committees that are allocated sort of into one department, particularly rec, culture, and wellness, and they get the bulk of that, and it it, it, it has an impact on HR, the HR management function over time, et cetera. Uh, and that ties into the other point. I wholeheartedly agree that um, I think part of the issue with that or how that happened was when recreation used to be under the auspice of public works, when we pulled those two apart and created the recreation department, we didn't also pull apart the committees. Uh, they all just kind of went with the person who was actively involved with them, which uh, in hindsight created some issues. So we need to make sure, as the councilor indicated, that the, com the committees are aligned with the, with the primary departments that are really the ones that are doing, that are doing the engagement or doing the work on behalf of those committees. So for example, if we look at active transportation, um, the bulk of the things that active transportation requests of council are functions of public works, um, not recreation, culture, and wellness. For example, the how long does it take to walk from here to their signs? That has nothing to do with recreation. Uh, putting public washroom signs up on public buildings, um, maintenance of trails, um, uh, building new trails, all of all of that sort of thing. You know, we need pedestrian crosswalk. All of that function is a public works function, and yes, there's a planning element, but it's secondary. Mm -hmm. um, recreation is really the role of uh, programming those spaces or mm -hmm. utilizing those spaces once they've been a developed. walking club, a walking club, or a, 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 you know, a jogging trail booster club, whatever you want to call it. I don't so know. they're they're more a um, but they're the programming. They're the they're the getting yeah. the people to use them, but to get them built or implemented or fixed or repaired, they you know, they would be in a public works realm and that primary contact in the organization should be public works. And that's just simply one example. Um, so on a, on a go forward basis, Mr. Sia, what I heard you say is that um, you wanted to provide some balance. And I think that's what the councillor was suggesting as well. Uh, how do we deal with this particular issue in terms of uh, departments? Are you recommending that you might want to look at, once council has this discussion, look at the committees and say, okay, Let's balance them off, or do you want council to do that? I think some of them, Mr. Mayor, are, are pretty common sense. Um, you know, like it just like heritage would go with planning. You know, it's pretty pretty mm -hmm. simple to achieve. Um, where I have a, a bit of a struggle is the the connection between a committee of council, and again the role of staff's job description or what they're supposed to do. So. I'll use, there's a number of these sort of committees that are out there like Canada Day, Supper Market, Christmas in Pelham that I, from an operational point of view, do not consider to be committees of council. Rather, they are uh, responsibilities of that particular department to deliver as programmed items. So they're sort of working committees. They, right. And I'm not suggesting for a minute we don't need volunteers and that we get rid of them. I'm just simply saying that as council committees, it creates sort of this conflict between you're appointing people on a Canada Day committee as a committee of council, but really what it is, it's a group of volunteers that are supporting the rec staff to deliver an event. A programming event. Okay, and, so that's the third that's item. The third part. The festivals and events that Councillor Kersey yeah. spoke about. So you're jumping ahead to that. Is there anything further? Uh, I'm going to go back to Councillor Kersey on this idea of aligning with strategic goals and departments, or are we going to just work our way through it as we work our way through the committees? What's your and maybe get a feel for the maybe at the end of this, the CAO can say next meeting. You know what? By the way, I think that committee should be this group because we want to have some balance. Is that okay? um, for for expediency, uh, I think a good starting point would be perhaps for our CAO and staff directors to have a look at it and say, okay, of the existing committees and the, for the committees that we see coming forward in the next little bit, such as the Comprehensive Bylaw Review Committee, mm -hmm. 
give us a recommendation on how to align them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could sit around here and argue about right. it for an hour, but right. I think it would be better to get a report on that line if that's the direction we want to go. Yep. If that's not where we want to go, then, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. Does everyone agree to that? Mm -hmm. Council? Yeah. We're good? Okay. And Council? Yeah, Council? just pick it up uh, with uh, what Darren was saying. If it's functionally driven by the staff, they're doing the bulk of the work, then it should be aligned with that. But I'll use the example that I am. Uh, mm -hmm. The Pelham Senior Advisory Committee really is more of a, mm -hmm. how can I say, I, I lost my train of thought. You know what I'm trying to say? It's going to be significantly important, but it needs to be aligned with some part of the corporate structure uh, where we have a great, you know, the, Martha comes and does all the mess. It's great. We, we know. We request funding, but it's going to, down the road, it's going to change perhaps where our customer focus is, right? Because so that's a different animal unto mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. But I think the more clarity, the ones that are pretty straightforward, the event stuff is pretty mm -hmm. straightforward. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty clear where we're going with that. And then at least we get some sense of from staff of how we could, you deploy your resources. Because right. if you don't deploy them, and they're spending all their time in there. And as you know, when, then that's where you get into trouble. Then the core delivery, that's where we get into issues, is not getting done because we're focusing on some of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm being general, but you know what I mean. Okay, so let's... Mr. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, just to, just to build on that point, I think it's important to denote the difference in, in my own opinion or perspective between an advisory committee to help right. council make good decisions right. and the seniors, seniors that's, that's an advisory policy. Because committee. they need to have input on how to build a town that's, you know, right. good, great for seniors, right. whereas Canada Day is a program deliverable. Correct. It's, it's a set thing it's that specific. you do as a matter of procedure. Right. Different. There's a big difference between those two. Okay, perfect. So I think that's a great segue into Councillor Kersey's third point. Um, and I was going to suggest that we start, um, for lack of a better word, working our way, knocking these committees off and saying, let's get rid of the, the ones that are that are kind of existent that we know and start working our way. So Councillor Kersey, you suggested to that point the idea of, of uh, a festivals and events committee. I've talked to, thought about this too and talked to another couple of councillors, some whether it's a promotion committee or community spirit advisory committee or whatever it is, and, and all of these quote unquote working committees right. somehow yeah. work their way through yeah. there. We also have to keep in mind what the CAO is saying that if if we say as a council staff recommend we agree, Canada Day is a great thing, go do it. Go do it. You know, and, and so the reason for a festivals and event committee to build on what the CAO said would be to help council make specific decisions. I think it's it's harkens back to the that, recreation, though. which which I talked about under um, when um, uh, Donald Johnson, when I read information about him, he said that there was the recreation committee, and that recreation committee came together to help yep. council and the town make appropriate decisions. They all went off and did whatever it was, Pell minor, minor hockey or baseball or basketball. So if we can use that kind of concept, so your concept of a festivals and event committee is what council person I think it echoes what what the CAO has said uh, I think uh, they would provide an advisory role uh, role they would uh, be a reporting structure uh, they would be the committee that would consume staff time after hours uh, the other committees would basically be functional committees who sure. not to belittle their role but they're the that guys jumps. that are doing the the actual on the, ground on the ground deliver, yep. delivery. And I use that as a, that's probably the most obvious example of a super committee. Mm -hmm. And there are maybe other groups of committees that one could put together to, again, uh, reduce staff time and use as a reporting function back and forth uh, between the committees and council. Okay, the CAO is commenting here to me. Um, just your vision it. of a of a whatever what you call it festivals and event committee, um, the purpose. What what would be the purpose of that? What are we trying to solve here? Well, Help again, council I, make decisions for what? I think it would speak to the fact that uh, we have this. We want to encourage our small town feel. We want to enhance the quality of life in our town. We want to get engage the residents to tell us what they want to see, and then how how. Um, so that committee could, for example, uh, bring forward a suggestion of a new festival right. and what the role of that new festival would be and how it might roll out and what the resources might need to be. And then council could make a decision and say, 
yeah, we really like that idea. We think, yeah, we can afford the, the resources, both in manpower and space and, and money, mm -hmm. um, or not. Mm -hmm. So I see that as a role uh, of okay. that committee. So uh, in my past experience, um, I've actually uh, was the staff person for that type of committee that was doing fundraising. And various committees, uh, subcommittees of, of that who organized an event, a golf tournament or a walk-a-thon or whatever, would they'd go off, do the event, come back and report and say, well, this was great, this wasn't great, whatever, looking for commonalities. That events, festivals and events committee may not need to meet every month. It might be once a quarter just to, to, to comment on those things. But the, the committees, I, I have something similar here, and the committees that would then report to that or give a report to would be Christmas in Pelham, uh, Summerfest, Canada Day, Supper Market. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, precisely. precisely. Yeah. And even to take it one step further, and I don't want to, it's almost like a community promotion of committee. Right. Because if you look at this, what is what, what would we be doing? Some say, we want to show you that the quality of life in our community focuses on all the other aspects, besides business environment, not taking anything away. Mm -hmm. So these are the things we do. Everybody's points right at the your summer fest. So that, all that stuff would be captured under mm -hmm. that particular That's heading it. and that yeah. particular mandate. I, I call it a community spirit committee. Yeah, in, some, in, in something like that, Mayor. Getting the, the, people excited about. Festivals and events is okay. It's just, a, it's what are you really trying to do by showing mm -hmm. people yeah, no, festival right. events? What are you trying to say to them? Like right. Art Park in, in Lewiston, why do people go there? Mm -hmm. right. They're drawn because of the whole cultural aspect of going there for no. the mm -hmm. music in the in the yeah. town itself. Yep. Maybe maybe it's something to do with culture. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, yeah. Culture. community spirit or something or yeah. something. It, so how do we move the yardstick on this uh, to use a Super Bowl analogy? Well, if I can, I can just, I, I keep going back to Richard Florida because I keep thinking when he wrote, like, why do people come, what, what would that committee do to embrace mm -hmm. that? What would they be doing? So self, uh, any of the festivals, any of the events, any of the mm -hmm. quality of life, walking and that, that kind of stuff. Quality but I'll leave it up to staff to play around with that. You know where I'm going with this is, to, like, what are the aspects of people wanting to stay here? And I look at our goals, you know, we, we want to be, uh, yeah. We want, to, we want to feel like a small town with a quality of our life. How are we going to do it? Provide an environment so businesses, I was going to say not only businesses thrive, people thrive. Exactly. People. So it's sort of a quality of life committee. It's all about people. It's, it's all about and the whole culture, co general community. It captures right. a lot of things. And you can do a lot of good stuff under there. Council Riviak. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, playing around in my mind about how this would, would, would function in on the occasion of something like Fenwick's 160th, yeah. which was a one-off yeah. event and found an awful lot of support f with staff, but really wasn't a part of any other committee. So what, what I'm hearing is that this would be the clearinghouse through which a Mobilize. resident's right. interest would right. come forward and uh -huh. say, listen, we want to be able to do this. And this is the committee that would be able to facilitate a quick turnaround on that because, of course, a lot of these things are time sensitive in terms of development, as the 160th was. Um, I think there could be a lot of, of benefit because people would know where to go and, and, and the committee would have a structure with which to, to help make the decisions. But, but a word of caution, I also see the potential there of good ideas being bogged down in too much structure, too much, too many layers of decision making, too much mm -hmm. time going past, and it's just a word of caution. I think it could work brilliantly. It, it could, of course, not work at all, which, which would so be so. The a, premise there, Councillor Ribiak, would be exactly the opposite of what you said: is that we streamline it to ensure that those events that have been targeted and identified, that there's quick imp implementation, that resources are available, all of these th events we've listed. And I would leave it to staff. I mean, this case in point, 18 months from now, we're going to be celebrating Canada's 150th birthday. There's lots of stuff that could happen here that this kind of group would be able to sh showcase Pelham and all the different aspects of its community and what we could do. So, you know, you're right. You don't want to get caught in bureaucratic decision-making and all that. This, I mean, that's part of it because if they're going to have a financial responsibility, whatever that may be, budget allocations and that, then that would be 
enhanced or embedded in that particular delivery of service. The simpler, the better. Don't make it, but citizens like that when they get hands on and you say, I want you involved. And that, we've seen that happen over and over again. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I hear what you're saying, Councillor. On the one hand, we want yeah. maybe a committee uh, to oversee these things, whether it's a culture committee, community spirit, festival events, promotional committee, whatever that is. And we can direct staff to put together a um, kind of a committee format in terms of reference for that. But by the same token, what the Councillor is saying is if somebody comes up with a great idea uh, and wants to implement it quickly, as often happens, uh, whether it's the 160th or supper market was the same idea they, they approached council in january and wanted it up and running by may june and we did uh, it. and 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 we did it we did it and and you know we had a lot of work a lot of staff work on that etc and it's a huge success um what council riviak saying is we want to make sure that we have the proper structure yeah. in which right. that can happen um so We'll have to think about that when I wrote, you know, the role, what's the role of council in that? Um, we have to, we have to think about how that, how that functions. But the, the idea, maybe it's something simple like if, if new events come, they, ha they have to get, you know, approved by council or whatever, but this is for the ongoing uh, benefit and, and, and movement of, uh, you know, events to make them bigger, better. So committees can learn from the success of Summerfest and when they're putting on Christmas in Pelham or whatever. So I don't know how else to, to sort of draw a conclusion that other than say uh, we really should be doing sort of a, a you know on the board creative problem solving process on this. But but other than to say that we direct staff to come back with us with a terms of reference for that type of group and let's let's see what that would look like. Comment on that, Mr. Ceo. Don't say the <laughs> 24 hours. Out. Um, <laughs> I, I just I'm trying to digest it because there's I think there's about four or five different things floating around there. I I, just, I have some concerns with an umbrella committee to sit on top of already having committees because I think that it would in some cases create additional bureaucracy, yeah, which is what the council. Uh, I'm still very much of the opinion that things like you know when we look at I think the supper market is a good example. There was a desire from the community. The community approached staff. Staff put together a plan. They brought it to council with a report. Council said, yeah, go for it. And, and that facilitated the quick turnaround. If you have, um, you know, a committee that's, you go to the committee and then they, you know, then they put something together and then it comes to council. I mean, really, the process is the same. You're just adding another layer of bureaucracy on there. So uh, it's just a cautionary note. The other thing is that I'm, I'm still pretty adamant that things like Canada Day, um, supper market now it's established Christmas and Pelham those are programming requirements of our rec department and they don't need committees they're just that's pure programming uh, that need volunteers yes but don't need that um, if you put a cultural committee on top of Summerfest Summerfest is a pretty big pretty big beast to handle mm -hmm. uh, it's a year-round thing I mean I, I'm not sure the role I don't understand the role of the cultural committee sort of Having a subcommittee, which right. is Summerfest, to me that right. that adds more. That I don't understand the purpose. And is and is some of that council's role? I, I don't understand. I guess I need yeah. more clarity. I don't know. How do we work on that further at this? Yeah, I, I think. Let's try, I, 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 Councillor Gurley. I, I I agree with the, where this is going. They, we have established committees, and we should leave them alone. Okay, Summerfest is, is working uh, efficiently, Supper Market is working efficiently. We, we don't need to mess with them. They're, they're, they're doing their thing. If they need some help with volunteers or with staff, then certainly they could, uh, you know, come forward with that. However, they seem to have their own bureaucratic function and, and, and setting and, and focus and uh, uh, leave them alone. We, if, if in fact uh, we're looking at events and festivals for uh, new things, maybe we can say new ideas and have somebody, you know, a, a means by which a new idea can can take form. Uh, that's good. But those that are already there, 
you know, for, for me to come in and tell Super, uh, sub, Summerfest that they have to do something else. You guys know what you're doing already. Like, you're, you're doing an efficient job, so leave it alone. If, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And okay. I think going along with, with what Councilor Ribiak said. Okay. Thoughts on that? So, Councilor Junkin. I agree entirely with John on that. Uh, have this committee made so for new ideas, they can uh, move that idea along in committee and then bring the result to council. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the committees that are working uh, and doing a heck of a job, I I'd say stay out of the way. But that's all I'm saying. Okay, so let's talk about those committees. Christmas in Pelham, Summerfest, Canada Day, Supper Market. Those are the ones that I had. Are, those, are there any others that... Again, You're saying just echoing what go, the, go with them? echoing what the CAO has said, uh, committee no uh, function of departments yes with volunteers and I and I think you know, people can be committee members that are sitting there volunteering. However, it is a function of a particular department within the town. So uh, you know therein lies a distinction different from a committee I would think, and I have to agree with the concept that the CAO has put forward in that respect. Okay, so Mr. CAO. Um, in terms of proceeding with these? My advice to Council, again, is uh, I think that the Christmas in Palm Canada Day and Supper Market need volunteers with their programming functions. They're not committees of Council. They don't require Council appointments, etc. Uh, I would, however, say that Summerfest is a big, big committee uh, thrust, and I don't think that, well, I know that our department alone cannot deliver that, that scale of event without a volunteer committee. So I would recommend the council would proceed with the terms of reference and, and, and promote or appoint people to Summerfest. They do have a sizable budget, a lot of responsibility, and it's a year-long project. So I, I think that one really does deserve a council appointed committee. The rest are programming functions of the rec department. Okay. We're okay with that direction? So you, we would... We are, do we have, we have terms of reference for Summerfest? We would go and advertise for that committee, is that correct? And it may not be, I mean, this is, I just want to get this in. Some folks were a little upset because we put all the committees, regardless of what they were, working committee, advisory committee, whatever, we put them all on a four-year term. And we had a lot of people for Canada Day Committee, for instance, say, well, I'm not sure if I want to volunteer for four years, but I'll volunteer for this year. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the Summerfest Committee, uh, is that a committee appointment? Is this a, for the for the whole four, t four years or for two years or maybe you can come back to us with yeah, the, 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 the terms can be yeah. different, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we, so we're going to proceed in that direction that we get going on the Summerfest? Are the terms of reference, are, they're included here, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Are we okay with those terms? No, sir? Um, yeah, I... I I just think the word generality is only how are we going to deal with the ones that are not going to be advisory to council, such as Canada Day, uh, etc., where we already have a councillor sitting on there, we have a staff person sitting on there, and without offending the volunteers that are serving on there, we, would, we should have an information meeting and talk to them about I mean, we have to... We have to mm -hmm. Recognize the time and the effort that they put into it, and respect mm -hmm. the fact that they have done that in the past. And we need, if we're taking a new strategic direction with these things, then we need to sit down with them and explain it mm -hmm. in the most rational way without offending them. And Mr. Mayor, Go ahead. And maybe that goes without saying, but yeah. Go ahead, Councillor. Uh, just uh, the supper mark, for example. Gary and I were there. The functionality and the framework has already been set out. Mm -hmm. So really, to be honest with you, our job was um, tactically was to be, is to was to work, I guess, to negotiate through all the rough waters of, and we're done. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, yep. we're done. I'm, I'm being perfectly honest. Yep. We're done. I mean, Vicky and the group that's there, those volunteers, they can carry on. Was there a counselor on Christmas in Pelham? No. no. So so, what we should do is we should direct staff to if if we're fine with the terms of reference for Summerfest to build on what the CAO and, and other councillors have said. We should direct staff to um, advertise for Summerfest and the terms of reference and then start working on those other committees, pulling the councillors off the supper market committee. The Canada Day Committee, I think, is supposed to have a councillor. 
um, and did and didn't and, and whatever, Councillor Ribiak, you did I serve was on that committee? Uh, to that committee and, and previously? And, and attended a number of meetings, they didn't need me. Yeah. You know. So if we would take the councillors off of those committees and make them working committees uh, for staff, however you term it. So I would just recommend you, I mean, I agree with Councillor Kersey, you need to acknowledge, but I mean, it's not like you're kicking people out of a volunteering role. They're still there to do that yeah. job. It's just the way that it's structured up here is changing in the sense that, you know, so you just, you don't need terms of reference for candidate anymore. Right. Council's yeah. done that. Well, They've given the direction. Now yeah. it's, we're accountable as staff to deliver that event for the community out of that department. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing more complicated than that. Okay. Are we okay with that direction, Councillor? And on the reverse side of that, when it comes to the Pelham Advisor Committee, that's a totally different animal. But I would suggest you advertise and continue because it's going to have a major policy impact and direction on where this corporation goes. Which one do we have? Pelham Seniors Advisor yeah, Committee. Yeah, I would say four year. I mean, okay, whether so it's me or anybody else, that one's we've more We've dealt with those committees. Now the Pelham Seniors Advisory Committee. Advertise. The, the overarching Mr. committee? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I think that there's something I, I might suggest to Council give a little thought to you, and that is some sort of a cultural committee, kind of like you have active transportation advocating for transportation, but maybe advocating for culture. It's a big part of our uh, our strategic plan, and I, I think there's some real merit there. Uh, I wouldn't tie it to another committee, but it, it's something that I think the council may want to consider. Culture advisory committee. There's a lot of cultural stuff in our strategic plan and Absolutely. our master plan. And, Strike one. And I think that. that's that's what Councillor Kersey was talking about with the festivals and events committee, perhaps, and that type of thing with oh, the culture. Yeah. Yeah. So what you're recommending is that you draft up a terms of reference for a cultural committee based on the cultural committee or cultural master plan mm -hmm. more or less yeah i think yeah. that's a good idea this way okay um, okay agree to that yeah you getting all this stuff i just have a question on the seniors advisory committee okay we're not there yet we're going to go back <laughs> oh. are we good on the other ones okay so i have cultural committee you're going to draft the terms of reference Summerfest, we're going to go and, and advertise the other ones. We're going to change the terms of reference and make them working committees now. Seniors Advisory Committee, Councilor Pat. Continue it on. You're one of the only two communities that have, it's a, it's a strategic mm -hmm. vital value to our direction and what we're doing. So I would suggest you continue on in the format. They're just starting. Others? Agree? Yes. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yes, I just want to agree. Which department are they? Oh, in the term. The sales office. Okay. I would go through yeah. the sales Council, the Good term? Yeah. The term is the four-year term? Four year. Yeah. Me four term years. of council? You good with okay. that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, since it's here, I put it on the sheet, Mayor's Youth Advisory, we are carrying on, and it's oh, yeah. something that's important, and it's similar in the idea, but that's an annual, same idea. annual term, and it's through the... Uh, you know, office of the mayor and CAO as well. So we'll continue okay. that one. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Just, yes. just wondering, and, and you did bring up the the point earlier in discussion. If somebody can commit for two years, a valuable mm -hmm. commitment for two years rather than the four years, could there be some flexibility in the in the membership of these? Because there, as Councillor Kersey pointed out, we have a wealth of knowledge out in this community, and if a, a busy person. Right. Really doesn't feel comfortable committing four years. Could could we look at that person committing to maybe a specific mm -hmm. uh, factor of that committee for uh, an ad hoc term or for a, a you know a year or two term in that? Uh, maybe yeah. you know could could we look at that as yeah. a possibility? Thoughts, thoughts Mr. on CEO? that? Thoughts on that, colleagues? Yeah, Councillor Papp, you have the most experience in terms of your work experience at the Y, mm -hmm. working with busy people. That's what we've done. Um, it's a flexible appointment. So maybe th include that in the policy that it's a flexible appointment, can be one, two, or so. Up, don't up to don't a maximum. up to a maximum, but you don't you don't. Yeah, you're right, John. Don't say four. Years. If, if somebody only wanted to give two years for a certain thing, they would. Some will give us three years. Some with one, mm -hmm. and uh, some are interpopulated. You know. I'll give you the example of Seniors Advisory. We have an appointee from the Mayor's Youth Advisory on right. It, it works very well. Right. Everybody shows up, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But somebody else may not be able to commit that kind of time. So it's a flexible appointment. It's, it's Okay, the, so we'll term. include that in the... Yeah. And, and again, one person may have a particular expertise that that is vital to the functioning of that committee at this particular point in time, so he can sit for eight months to see that, that 
part of it gone through if if in fact he can give some valuable he or she can give some valuable input towards uh, towards that one particular Absolutely. focus okay thank you counselor so we'll include that in you're talking that committee and future and other committees right sure okay flexible service okay thank you so we've done those now the other committees um, and I'm, I'm I did something on this too, counselor you see my sheet here some scribbling so I'm just going to lead us off um, some of these I think are relating more to the strategic goal in terms of small town feel committee um, and and maintaining the feel of our community so you raised active transportation um, committee very very valuable committee um, maybe should be aligned with a different department um, and and in terms of mandate right the mandate council pap talked about the seniors advisory how are we going to work and make sure that our community is seniors friendly age friendly etc the mandate of the active transportation really as I see it for the next couple of uh, next year at least is this master plan right mm -hmm. we've done a lot of nibbling at the edges mm -hmm. of things so we have the active transportation master plan um, and maybe that can be the the, the marching orders the marching orders for that the, go their, go do that that's their blueprint that's what they're going to be working right? on right and in the meantime we're working on uh, complete streets and all that other stuff right in tandem in with tandem that. with that as a as a policy so are we agreed on that that really the active transportation walkable cyclable the terms of reference are are good their mandate is the master plan i'm going to throw that out they function very well very influential group councillor kersey um yeah i i wrote down that the active transportation like that but i i also saw a role of them being involved in a review of new developments that are coming forward they might um, be given an opportunity to look at the development this the design of the streets the, the trail connectivity and make some commentary on that um, and I saw them uh, playing a role in, uh, in an economic development sense as well in promoting the community as a bike friendly uh, community, you know, perhaps developing Canberra Road as a bike trail and, you know, some of the things that we talked about in the Heritage Master Plan. Yeah. I thought that they could play a role in that uh, as well. So. Um, I think they do already with. They specific do. developments but as an ad hoc they don't bring it to their table they come to the public meetings right and I was thinking more be more proactive yeah. to have them make some commentary there again there's some very yeah, I, qualified people I'm on of that two team. minds two minds of that um, if if uh, the direction that mr. Glover is taking in terms of the policies for site plans the policies for streets and those kind of things if if we can achieve those and it's just sort of a litmus test against it then we don't need a group to get in the way of something and say what about this corner what about that corner uh, as opposed to coming to the public they can come to the public meetings mm -hmm. so which process do you follow and do you add another administrative process that kind of thing so let's maybe we take it to the higher level then if the policies are being developed maybe they're involved at the policy mm -hmm. development level mm -hmm. and that carries through when right. staff reviews because they've already commented on it right. so, so I just think that, that's a better role for them than yeah. even developing right. okay so, so policy use, development of like the complete streets and the trail activity blah, yeah. blah, blah, so blah, they blah. become strategic advisors exactly. to that particular exactly. aspect of that development mm -hmm. Okay. So nobody, I don't know, Gary, they don't want to see, <coughs> you don't want to see some developer and say, you guys are trying to tell us what to yeah. do. Right. Yeah. That's no. the flip side of it. Because I can see what does that can... do to the public no, process and all that? 100% agree. Right. The right. policy right. level is better. Yeah, in essence. It is. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay, so policy development of those things. Okay, is that good for active transportation? Can we put a check mark there? We're doing okay. Communities in bloom. I don't know. Councillor? First and foremost, I guess Communities in Bloom is a an organization that, that I think straddles all of Canada, and there, and that committee kind of represents our, our membership in that effort. So I think that there's a kind of a set of, of terms of reference that arises out of that that I think we need to be cognizant of and, mm -hmm. and, and, and respect. So that's the only comment that I would make. I think I think it's it's a little different or special in that regard because it's 
It's part of a, a much bigger picture. So leave it as I it think is? It, I think it was, Councillor, and it was formed, and, and maybe the um, maybe Mr. Mantle or, or the, the clerk who've been long serving here can uh, remember, but my understanding was that it was formed um, back in the early 2000s, and it was Mayor Beamer at the time, uh, that council um, uh, that, that said that they wanted to beautify the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. They joined that. Communities in Bloom, did it for a few years, and then it was, there's a cost element to it, um, but they kept the Communities in Bloom moniker, but aren't part of the association broadly. Uh, part of the Communities in Bloom, in Bloom um, stop me if I'm getting this wrong, anybody, if anybody knows, um, but, but part of the Communities in Bloom piece is that at a certain increment, whether it's every year, every two years, whatever, somebody from away comes to the community and judges you, mm -hmm. right? Um, I've, I've long thought that, that we may want to do that. Um, Councillor Papp indicated about the sesquicentennial, I think, for Canada, mm -hmm. 2017. Maybe we would say the mandate for communities in bloom in the form that they're in and whatever else they need to do give us advice on that would be to get our community ready for entry into Communities in Bloom for 2017 for Canada's 150th anniversary and give them that marching order, the mandate to do that. We, we aren't currently part of that overarching group, so let's do that and be judged that year. It yeah. would give somebody a goal, folks a goal to achieve other, you know what I mean? And, and focus their, their efforts. Those are my thoughts response I, I would say first of all that that if we if we continue to call them communities in bloom and there is a broader organization that by that name and creating an expectation around that we got to be a little bit careful or maybe we need to consider whether we're going to continue to call it communities in bloom but I think if the objective is to <coughs> sign back on for that purpose then then I think it's right if we're not going to sign back on I would say let's, let's think about exactly what that committee is and consider a name change. Councillors, response? Councillor Kersey. I had a couple Don't of thoughts quiet. about communities in bloom. I thought, right. again, to try and align them with the strategic uh, role and align them with the department, that they could certainly play a role in, in when we <laughs> look at our uh, carbon footprint and how uh, the environment can play a role in in our green space, they do the cleanup area, you know, the cleanup days and all of that sort of thing. Um, we have had a beautification committee in the past. Um, rather than have a beautification committee roll that responsibility to them, whereby they would look at such things as maintenance of the mm -hmm. uh, gardens on our main streets, mm -hmm. uh, comment to give advice to council on, you know, ways of keeping. Um, weeds from between the right. unistones, things right, like that, right, where right. their expertise could come yep. to play. So I think that there's a role for them to play in planning and public works, is what I'm trying to say, and give them some specific initiatives that they could drive towards. Okay. Others? I, th I think this, the second part certainly fills fulfills what their mandate is. The I don't know about the carbon footprint, so I'd have to think a little bit about about that that piece. Um, do you want to add anything to that? About well, again, uh, I think you know if if we have functioning gardens, if our parks are well maintained, um, all of those, those sort of things. If we keep our waste under control, maybe they undertake to educate the public about you know waste uh, control, recycling, uh, that sort of thing. They mm. could play a role in reducing the carbon footprint. And I think that's a role for communities okay. in bloom or a communities bloom slash beautification. Okay. Councillor? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think, I think that that goes to some aspects of it. I don't think that it really covers the stuff that ultimately you may want to think about or occasion may come to us to yeah. think about in terms of, say, switching from gas in, in our vehicles to, to some non-carbon fuel or, or, you know, producing our own electricity out of 
whatever. There's some really big issues that come under under the carbon footprint that I don't think would ever ever fall to a, a committee like Communities in Bloom. So, so it wouldn't be the entire mandate. No, just that they be mindful of it as they do their work. That's they right. come up with programs too. Right. So part of that might be like the community garden. Correct. Okay. Okay, uh, Councillor. Yeah, I, 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 I would, I would concur. I think that that being mindful of the of the carbon footprint becomes an, an ethic or a principle or a guidepost as opposed to the objective. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to try and join it. <laughs> okay. So, should we add that to the terms that they consider the environment and everything they do and the reducing the carbon footprint, something like that? And, and I just asked the CEO about the Communities in Bloom uh, moniker and, and the clerk and whether she recalls this. That is your recollection of where it came from, is that correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the committee was established when I became an employee, but that, that does sound uh, like essentially how it was it developed, but no. <laughs> um, but I, I would have to do some research okay. to confirm that. Okay. Go ahead. Just a quick comment. I see that our solution statement with regard to Communities in Bloom mm -hmm. talks about promoting the Ontario Communities in Bloom mm -hmm. program, and there's a strong suggestion that there must be some connection between the two organizations. So I think we really need to review that seriously. If we're not part of it, let's not pretend to be part of it. Yeah. yeah we haven't been. Well, it might okay. be Okay. So can you research that for Council? Mr. Seahawk? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. My, <laughs> m m I've had some experience with Communities in Bloom, and Communities in Bloom is a paid organization on the provincial and national level. So if you have a Communities in Bloom committee, uh, they're a paid member of that organization and carry out that organization's mandate. Um, if you don't want to pay to be a member, then they're really not a Communities in Bloom. They're probably more like a beautification committee. So okay. there's a, a, a very clear distinction between the two there. So I guess what I recommended was that they we, they become a paid organization by 2017 and work up to that. So what's the, di the distinction? Can we do all the things that we talked about under that moniker or not? Or don't we know? Well, yes, you, yes, you can, Mr. Mayor. You don't have to be adjudicated. Like, that's an optional thing. Communities, communities ask to be adjudicated because it is a competition, so it's, it's more about community bragging rights um, than anything. Uh, but Communities in Bloom does... You know, they, they have a very specific scope and mandate that they that they carry out. And a lot of a lot of times it's, you know, um, we need volunteers out in public spaces planting flowers and uh, doing maintenance and it's real hands on type stuff, uh, in conjunction with the local government. Okay. In fact this yeah, very Go ahead. quickly, in fact, uh, you're right there. And in fact in many European cities there are citizens groups whose responsibility is for beautification, horticulture, etc. That's what they do. They don't, they're not part, and that's what how they keep. I remember meeting some of these people in certain parts of Copenhagen. That that's what the world sure. is. Mm -hmm. But they're appointed through the local government, and that their job is to work in tandem to make sure that that it's beautified and exemplifies the environment and the greening of the community. Mm -hmm. So, does the solution statement do that, or do we need changes to it? <coughs> Probably do. You can't say it's part of the Ontario. Can we look at it? Yeah. Change it and change the name of the committee. Okay. Pelham and Bloom. Okay. <laughs> uh, are we okay then directing staff to, to take a look Let at that? Let them play around with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I th I th there's the Architectural Design Committee, which I think is an ad hoc, ad -hoc. no brainer, it's continue on. Mm -hmm. Except there is the recommendation there that an ex officio member of council sit on it. We've already approved that, right? So we just need to put somebody on, put somebody on that committee. Okay. Yeah. Um, so maybe that's something we can think about when this comes to council at our next meeting or something like that. <laughs> okay. Um, then the last, well, there's there's two others. The uh, we have heritage. We want to make sure we leave enough time to talk about heritage, and we're getting short on time here. Um, and then the the whatever the downtown beautification committee. Park it was if there's any work that still needs to be done to meet the strategic right plan which do you want to talk about first heritage heritage that's more important yeah 
Okay, go ahead, Councillor Rubiak. Um, I'm, I'm going to sit back and, and contribute. <laughs> I don't know how to start that discussion uh, with it without making myself sound. Mr. Uh, CEO, and I've had a have a um, have a oh, do staff need to stay? Was a question from. If we're going on camera, I need Carrie. Please. You guys can go. Want to leave? No, you're not. not you, you're welcome. You, you're welcome to stay, <laughs> but you're not needed. <laughs> he perked right up there, didn't he? <laughs> say, say no more. Um, <laughs> so that they, the CEO and I have had a conversation, uh, Mr. CEO. Not feeling well. Oh, go man. Go home. Man. Go home. Um, I think there's a number of different issues with regards to this committee. Um, Good night, guys. Among them, the. The terms of reference call for the director to be the one that is the staff representation on there. Um, and for whatever reason, years ago, that was delegated down to an administrative assistant position. Um, and there's been, ever since, I think, some level of uncertainty about the types of, the type of role and support the, that the town uh, provides to the Heritage Committee and what exactly is the Heritage Committee's mandate. Uh, they uh, oftentimes, from a staff point of view, uh, can be perceived as acting well outside of their mandate. Um, the other frustration that I've, I've been made aware of is that uh, the committee, uh, the Heritage Committee does, you know, good work, but they, they do good thinking, uh, but maybe they don't do all of the work, and there's an expectation that staff is there to do the work of the Heritage Committee. Uh, they just want to direct staff around, and, and it has created a conflict about who's sort of, you know, it's, it's this whole staff direction issue and managing resources type thing. Um, you are aware that there is um, a recommendation in the budget for uh, some of the, um, the, the work that needs to be done on the Heritage level. Um, at this point, my clearest advice to Council is that you uh, proceed with contracting that work out and having a consultant come in and doing the register um, and that you uh, take the time to complete that work before you reappoint anyone to the Heritage Committee. Um, because once we have the register done, you will have a very clear mandate for the committee and how they would proceed, uh, what their roles and responsibilities are. Um, but I think it would be important to get that, that work done first and then consider uh, appointments to the committee. So that would be my recommendation. And then the other is that the, the terms of reference, we're talking about the terms of reference, um, and it's a, staggered, it's a staggered term. And so there are still some there, but even though the term changed and... Yeah, there's some, there's some number of administrative issues. One of the things, Mr. Mayor, is that I believe this is the only committee of council appointed by bylaw. Um, no. Advisory committee appointed by bylaw. A, a, a non-statutory committee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Madam Clerk? They do have a separate bylaw instead of a terms of reference. They um, basically run by bylaw, so that is different than any other committee. Right. Mm -hmm. Committee appointments are made by bylaw. This one is unique in that their terms are staggered. Yes. And so um, it's it's actually difficult to manage yeah. that. So right now they are yeah. essentially an active committee. They may not have the full um, population of the committee at this point. And I, I think, Mr. thank you, and I think Mr. Schultz's letter <coughs> speaks to that, um, that there's a staggering and, and that kind of thing. And it, Point. Just the, in the letter, there's some challenges. The, the, the point being, Ms. Mayor, I think that, that that bylaw needs to be rescinded and revisited right. uh, right. while the work of the designation is going on and then uh, coming back with a very clear terms of reference, with a mandate, that all the things you talked about this evening, that gives a very clear direction and accountability to Council. How long will that um, work of the uh, consultant, what's that timing look like? Uh, we've scheduled just because it's in a budget year a year, um, but until we put the uh, you know put the call out, uh, I don't I I'm not in a position to give you any definitive type of timeline. I don't expect it would take a year, but yeah, it, it is a considerable amount of work. Okay, my impression in talking to the director was actually sort of a, a half year uh, job. So yeah. um, the the other piece is that council will recall just 
for more facts. Council will recall that we've actually directed staff to to relook at the bylaw because of these issues. But maybe this is the and we have some feedback from the committee and they want to change the bylaw and council looked at it and said this isn't the right bylaw but maybe this is the right way to approach it and look you know hear back from from colleagues on that that if we really develop that terms of reference get the mandate from the uh, work that's going to be done mm -hmm. um, and, and move forward that's what you're recommending mm -hmm. so comments to that uh, I, I have a question, again. and perhaps Councillor Durley, having sat on that, could bring some light to it. My understanding that the, is that the process is sort of two-tiered. The first level is that the committee would look through the community and identify those structures, buildings, whatever, parts of buildings that might have some heritage characteristics that are worth preserving. So they would go on a whatever I don't I can't remember the name of that list register the register mm -hmm. but then once you take that register then they were supposed to go through and I go through every single property and do this very yeah. detailed report <clears throat> and and then make specific recommendations to council as to what should be designated or not yeah. correct so I guess my first question is have we have they developed at least the register that the outside expertise then could develop into reports as a um, recommendation for designation, or is there still work to be done there before we engage the professional? You know what I mean? Why pay a professional to yeah. develop that initial register? Is, so is there a role there or not? Councilor Gurley, can you answer that? Yes, I can. They, they had a list of some 85 properties that they identified having some significance. And uh, in that, when you have a registry, all you say is uh, 16 College Street uh, architecture. That's, that's the registry. Okay, the Heritage Act says that you, you need to go through various steps in order to uh, actually document all of the specifics so that a bylaw, actually the town has to make a bylaw in order to, in order to designate a property. So uh, has the list been done? There has been a list. Is it a list? Not really. They really haven't followed. And as the CAO has indicated, they, they've started a lot of projects but never really finished any. And, and this, is, this is where the, uh, where the whole problem is. And they're, they're saying that staff should have done it. They're pointing fingers around saying, you know, nobody has done what we asked them to do, and yet they haven't done what they were supposed to do in order for them to be able to ask somebody to do something. So uh, it, it has been a frustrating four years sitting on that term because actually a lot of things were discussed, but nothing was ever accomplished other than the fact that we got a design for a plaque. And Carl Bray came in and did, did the Heritage Master Plan. Other than that, those are the only really two concrete things that were, were done in the last four years. I'm going to have to interrupt here because we're getting close to curfew. Um, are we prepared to extend the meeting? Is there somebody that would want to move that the remainder of the business on the agenda be dealt with or until all matters concluded at 1030, whichever comes first? Councillor Kersey? Sure. Yeah, let's let's move this along. I think um, I'm pretty clear. Ready for calling the here. question of extending curfew? Question for clarification. Yes. Um, is it this agenda, or are we going to get to the in-camera items as well? Uh, this agenda. I don't know how we deal with the in-camera items. That means he's in recess right now. So. Just pick it up later. Can pick it up later. Or? Can do it. Yeah. That one stands in it's recess nothing, right nothing now. Nothing really. Oh. We don't know. Okay, let's, okay. let's, this is for this no, meeting. It's a separate meeting. It's a council meeting. It's a separate and it meeting. In but can we, can we, the council's question is can we start it? We'll come back to it. After, too many after 10. Questions, yeah. No, I see. No. Just push no. so we have to recess it. Okay. okay. So I got to call the question on extending curfew. All, to, to all those in favor? For this meeting. Any opposed? For this meeting. Curfew is extended. Um, Really, we had your answer in terms of that issue with the Heritage Committee. It looks like this inventory, Mr. CAO, 
that's in the capital budget that we approved is going to do that for those 85 projects. You're going to look through each of them, is that correct? Actually, in clar and, clarification, and do that work that uh, there, the wants? There, there was a list of 85, but they have uh, four people have gone out and take, taken photographs, and they, are, they must have a couple of hundred photographs of, of properties that may be significant. They also got a list of uh, properties in year built from MPAC, and they were looking at anything that had a year built past such and such a date. And MPAC's records were just so good that uh, really <laughs> some of these properties and some of these buildings didn't exist anymore. So so the, the, in, in truth, they, they have had a, a very difficult time in putting together a package which could be called the inventory or the registry list. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Percy. So perhaps that's the, I don't know how, how Mr. CAO feels about that, but maybe that's a very specific, identifiable role with we could give a timeline and there to create an inventory of those properties that they see as being needed to move to the next level of investigation for, and that's where the professional comes in, as opposed to paying the professional who may not have familiarity with our community to go around and try to identify these properties. Yeah, I, I, we might be overthinking. I think the, the work of the committee is going to be used by the by the professional to build that, and then the committee is going to look at it after. No, no, but what I, well, maybe I misunderstood what Councillor Durley said. My impression was that the work that was done in that area was pretty sketchy. In, in a, Go ahead, Councillor. If, if I may, there is, I believe Anna is in possession of it. When Nushi was here, we had that public meeting uh, public open house basically uh, all of the properties that were on the list not all all of the properties that were there are on that list mm -hmm. there may be more but certainly those properties that were on that PowerPoint presentation are properties that were de deemed to have some significance as far as as heritage value is concerned so if, if Anna still has that that would be a great place for anybody to start on on such a list and, and that would be a great point the further to the 85 if you notice in the goals for uh, for that which is in here they're looking at perhaps getting 15 to start with mm -hmm. so in fact they are having sort of a shifting gears in in their regard as well it doesn't have to be 85 properties it can be any number of properties but they their goal said that they would identify and follow through with 15 of them from that list so you know and again that would be an easy take for for somebody to do if in fact that was the goal was 15. okay, okay. thank you councillor biak thank you i i take the ceo's point uh, with regard to Bylaw 3079. I think that that's really the source of a great deal of problem here. Um, I think the committee is drawing from 3079 uh, an inference that uh, there is, in fact, given to them by this bylaw uh, some level of authority, uh, some level of activity that they ought to be involved in, uh, the imprimatur to go ahead and, you know, go through all those activities. And the fact of the matter is that. I'm not sure that the 3079 reflects what, as a bylaw, reflects what, what we as a council want to have done. The councillor uh, Akursi is talking about a specific task to get done, agree with him, but how does that sit with respect to 3079? So I think we need to, to really, really ask ourselves about, about that as, par as part of this discussion. And Mr. CAO has indicated that, that he feels we ought to rescind it. And I'm not sure I disagree at all. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Further discussion? Just to draw this to conclusion, Councillor Papp? Park it. Park the issue, the entire park issue? It, park, park it. Go ahead with the consultant. There's just too many things I'm hearing that there's incongruity, uncertainty, you got to redo the bylaw. You got work to do that still has to be done. People's roles aren't sure what the jurisdiction is. I say, yeah. like, what else are you going to do? I right. agree. It sounds so, like it's a dis. Don't think it, don't think this wrong. I'm not being disrespectful. It's dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. It's not working the way it wants, and it's part of maybe our not lack of direction or whatever the case may be. But park it. 
we're, we're going in circles. We've got to come to some decision. If we don't want to appoint these people, then leave it for the time being and do the consulting work or whatever has to be done. Get it done. That's our job. Right. So the C just to, to build on that, what the CAO suggested was that we uh, do what you're saying, the, the heritage inventory, the report, and maybe that can be, instead of taking the entire year, it can be done in a shorter period of time, especially since the committee has done some work on that and identifying them. Um, draft a terms of reference so that right. so that it's not um, simply a, um, you know, it's clear, it's consistent with others. Councillor Durley sent me a, a note here, the Heritage Act does give some powers, so it has to have deference, the terms of reference has to have deference right. to those to those powers and however that that function the heritage act also outlines the procedure that they need to go through in order to get to final designations right. as well there's right. Right. Okay. so so it has to be part of that could be redone and then when you say park it you mean follow through <coughs> on the advice of the ceo rescind the bylaw because rescind this committee's bylaw. kind of in suspended animation quite frankly for lack of a better term so is that what we're what how much we're time do we need a month to bring it back or what I mean mr. CEO uh, we don't need much time to bring it back next uh, committee next council or PNP yeah. PNP yeah let's, let's, do it. let's do it and get okay. it over and get going Councilor Junkin so what uh, excuse me so what decision have we just reached uh, about the bylaw you're going to be send the bylaw and then so what's I think with the CEO, and I'll ask you to, to comment, but what's being recommended that instead of operating through a bylaw, which yeah. is obviously causing some challenges, in fact, in the fall, they came, the committee themselves came forward with um, some changes they wanted to the bylaw, and council directed staff to develop a, a, a different bylaw. So there, there's, there's all these different views so obviously it might take a bit longer Councilor Pat because we oh, I don't know we may want some that. of that that feedback but what's being recommended is is that a, a the committee be set up like the other committees with a terms of reference with um, a specific term of office it could be up to four years non stagger those kind of things that we all talked about that fulfill the policies of, of committees in general um, and those those terms of reference be uh, drafted and brought forward to council for ratification. In the meantime, um, the recommendation is that the, then the bylaw would be rescinded and then the committee would have to be populated based on the new terms of reference, I think is what is generally being recommended. And as that's going on, this heritage inventory report is going to be carrying on, which has to be done anyways. Yeah, it's got to be done. So I hope that answers did. Did, well, I, did I, can, I get that right? Go ahead. I'm not here to cheerlead anybody, but I do know that the Heritage Committee does have a lot of frustration with Council in the fact that you, Council was given a letter back in October. Again, I'm going to have that Kirkpatrick thing. <coughs> Here's a, again, we had a company that was going to give us a gift of four plaques. Council never acted on it. So that is one aspect of their uh, frustration is that they have designated these, and they are designated, and, and, and we never have acted on those four plaques. So I know that's <laughs> frustrating them. We haven't designated anything other than the flagpole. Well, that's not what the Heritage Comfort, Committee Comfort them. Maple has been designated. Oh, pardon me. Yes, you're right. Okay. And, and I believe two others. Anyway, so, so that's let's just, get, I'm just saying yeah. that's a frustration from them. And the other and I don't thing, know, the letter, I don't think, did it come to council? It went to the okay. staff. So yeah. that has to be clarified as well. Okay. That's um, good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's some yeah. discrepancies in terms of they want to advert or they want to designate Old Pelham Town Hall. It's not designated. Is it the Comfort Maple? You know those kind of things. So and the railway, uh, the railway house. Right. The it's, railway. it's actually they want in, to, but they haven't. They aren't designated. So Old Pelham Town Hall. It's in the it's in the goals here. Maple Acre Library, which and the old meeting house. I was going to say on the Maple Lake Library, I don't know that you want to designate it before you yeah. make changes to it. Yeah. You know, you do it after, right? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> anyway, go ahead. I'm just saying that uh, uh, I hear that council likes to have committees that are dedicated, knowledgeable, and, uh, and what have you. And that committee, we've got uh, uh, Mark Schultz, which is a heck of an engineer, uh, very, uh, heritage oriented knows how to build old stuff knows the history of everything and then we got some 
committee, so members of that heritage committee, that yes, maybe they're a little pushy, but uh, gee, they sure are dedicated to the community, and, and they're there, at, and they were there as an advisory committee. The planning committee, the planning department, asked them for a recommendation on that uh, on that one site we were talking of. I don't know. Seems like days ago, but an hour or so ago, and the advisory, the planning commission, the planning department asked them to give a recommendation, and they went down and had a meeting with the guy, and they gave nothing. All it was was a recommendation on that site. It wasn't as if they. I don't see them overstepping the boundary on that. But anyway, that's. I'm not here cheerleading, but uh, I'm just representing the other side. That uh, if you want good people. Uh, Perhaps, though, maybe they need it. Maybe everybody does suffer, uh, 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 gets better with a, with a more defined mandate. I think uh, that's it. They yeah. do, that's they do Marvin. Yeah, they, they, we've it. seen this before. Yeah. So if that's, yeah. So go ahead, yeah. So we'll get it clear I with them. That's, that's, yeah. That's, that's exactly what we're trying yeah. to say. Okay. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, the, good people can stay, they stay. The that's the direction mm -hmm. yeah. that uh, you recommend to council some terms of reference um, moving forward on this report and then as a result of that then rescinding the bylaw because we want we're going to move with the terms of reference and clarify it okay anything else on that no, no. and and um, Councilor Pat made reference to this you know we've, we've seen this before it if we don't have clearly defined things, it. and not not only with committees but with council, right? If we if we're not clear on what what the expectations we'll are, yep. then things happen. Assumptions. People assume that they're supposed to do this when when we think that they're supposed to do this. So we need to be crystal clear mm -hmm. in in the role um, that we have. So hope, hopefully that direction will allow us to, to we'll move in that, with that role. Sure. Okay. Yep. Did we hit all the committees? No, you don't today. want to talk about enough for today. Enough for today. <laughs> enough for today. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm I would be unbeautified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would ask council to councilors to think about uh, the one piece here, and I think it fits in with our small town field. We're not going to talk about it now, but just to think about it in terms of the community improvement plan promotion. I think, which is probably where Councillor Kersey's going, and. Yeah. and the designs of buildings and that type of thing. Whether that's yeah. something that we do or yeah. whether that's something that a specific committee does or whatever, but that's something that the, the missing piece, I think, um, the CIPs happen, hmm. but they're not being pushed and maybe they need a little bit of a push to, to do to have that small town feel. So we'll take that up at our next, yeah. maybe we yeah, can I, add that to. I actually uh, had that written down too. Yeah, perfect. We didn't even get no meet ahead or anything to discuss it. We're on the same line. Uh, yeah, we can. Can we put in a PNP on the CIP? Yeah, that yeah, beautification. Yeah, there's committee. some real good pra best practices on there. There's some best practices. There's some okay, real now good am I supposed practices. to give this in here? What what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, without further discussion, it's been moved by Councillor Pat that this regular meeting of committee of the whole be adjourned until the next s committee scheduled for Tuesday, February 17th unless sooner called by the mayor and I appreciate the clerk uh, taking notes here in terms of the direction we just kind of went for consensus in terms of the direction moving forward so I appreciate that I'm going to call the question oh Councillor Kersey very brief could we have the strategic plan uh, or st staff strategic plan initiatives brought forward at another meeting mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to I, I really yeah. think there's some stuff there that we, need we as a council about. need to yeah, bite okay. into. Is yeah. there anything else we want to bring forward? I'd like this to come forward too, because I think there might be something that we want to highlight with a priority that isn't here. So we can have this uh, document come forward. Perfect. And eventually we're going to have to approve that. Mm -hmm. So I can bring that through TMP. Right? Yeah, we'll yeah. bring it at the same time. That's perfect. Okay. Anything further? Can call the question? All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Should we hang on to these <laughs> camera envelopes? Then? We hand those back in. Um, back in. We'll deal with this. Or do you want to bring any up? urgent issues? Is there anything urgent in here? No, it's, it's just minutes. Oh, it's just minutes? How do you want to? Did you take care of this thing? With, uh, what's your name? Is that done? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm